Yellowstone Park is home to some of the most extreme environments on Earth. The Old Faithful Geyser and the steaming paint pots are caused by intense thermal activity, hot acidic water rising from deep in the planet's crust. These phenomena attract millions of tourists, but unlike the human day trippers, there are a few hardy life forms called extremophiles, which actually make their permanent homes in this dangerous subterranean soup. Mark Young and Trevor Douglas came to the Yellowstone Thermal Fields to study the park's strangest inhabitants. We've speculated that anywhere that there's life, that there's going to be viruses. And for almost 50 years now, we've known that there's been microbial life present uh, in these high temperature environments of Yellowstone. So we just put the two together and said, well, there must be viruses associated with these unusual life forms. I began to get interested in viruses which make a structure and it's always exactly the same and you can tell Ebola virus from influenza virus from you know a virus out of Yellowstone based on its shape. What does a virus do? It transports something from A to B, gets into a cell, takes it over. It's a little machine and what we want to do is take that little machine and manipulate it to do things that are good things. Trevor and Mark took me to a corner of Yellowstone which most tourists never see. Where are we going, guys? Well, right now we're headed into one of our sampling locations. Welcome to Lime Creek. Yeah, I wouldn't be walking in this. Uh, <laughs> it's about pH 2 in this water right here. And uh, now, what that'll is that? go right through your fancy shoes. Ah, so pH 2 means very acidic? Very acidic. So this is close to battery, battery acid. acid. Wow. Boiling acid is what we're most interested in. Boiling uh, vats of sulfuric acid. They're dominated by microbes that live in these hot springs environment. And so all the enzymes that work in these cells have evolved to operate very efficiently at these high temperatures. Well, let's measure the temperature, pH. See where we're at. Okay, let's do it. You're gonna do this. Yeah, Not me. yeah. Too dangerous for us. <laughs> <laughs> And do you want to measure in centigrade or Fahrenheit? Fahrenheit. No, come on, you boys. <laughs> so just put, put it all the way in? Mm-hmm. The deeper, the better. Actually, the temperature will go up as you go down. 172.4 degrees Fahrenheit, or 78.1 degrees Sweet. Celsius. So we have 172 degrees and pH 2, which is perfect for the we're conditions looking for? we're looking for. Once we find something, we'll bring it back to the lab and grow it to the point where we can work with it, where we can get enough material to study. At the Bozeman, Montana Laboratory, the new virus samples are prepared for the electron microscope. So this is one we found in, in Yellowstone, and it has all the typical features of a virus. So it has symmetry, see the angles around the edge. You see some projections coming out on the, corner. the, on the corners, like barbs. places like these. Yeah. Now what is the scale here? This virus particle you see is 72 nanometers across. Can you measure one? 72 nanometers is really small. A single sheet of paper is over 100,000 nanometers thick. A virus is just an M&M. &M. It's got this hard protein shell on the outside with the good stuff to a lot of people on the inside, this genetic material, this DNA or RNA. We actually throw out that material and just le left with this hard shell. It's wrong to think about what we work with as viruses. They start off in Yellowstone as viruses. We get them in the lab. We rip out everything from the inside and it's just a container. Trevor and Mark are using the microscopic containers in a chemical reaction which produces hydrogen gas. We take this container and we embed a small metal particle. And the metal particle is, again, it's entrapped inside the container like your espresso is entrapped inside the little cup. And it stays there and then we get a reaction inside the container. This is now a solution of this catalyst, this little cluster of metal ions embedded into the protein cage. And what we're going to see is as soon as this hits the solution, we're going to get a burst of hydrogen production. Okay. And you're going to see it bubble. So let's put this back 
in the light. The efficient production of hydrogen could go a long way to lessening the world's dependence on oil. <laughs> you can actually hear it give off hydrogen. So this is an incredible amount of hydrogen that's produced immediately upon addition. We're not at the point where we're making, you know, enough hydrogen to make a car go. But if their process can be scaled up, it may someday be a useful source of fuel. The same extremophile shells which hold the hydrogen catalysts can also be made to carry minute amounts of other materials, allowing more precise MRI imaging and even carrying chemotherapy drugs directly to a body's cancer cells. In electronics, the computer industry is now studying how virus shells could be used to house magnetic memory. Panasonic is already working with the Yellowstone team. And we take a virus out of Yellowstone and make a hard drive in a computer. Billions of viral containers, each enclosing a magnetic particle, would be tightly packed into a storage device much denser than current hard drives. We can lay them down to make very, very high density magnetic recording medium. We would be talking about thousands or tens of thousands of fold increase in storage density. Once it goes from the basic research that we do to something like Panasonic, they have a motivation to move it into a computer really quickly. It's always very little steps that it takes to accomplish a big task in the end. And that's the really fun part of research is always doing something that's brand new. It's not in the future, it's now. I mean, this is happening. We, we have breakthroughs all the time going down these paths and you don't know what the end result is. And sometimes it's a total bust and sometimes it's, whoa. <laughs> It's an incredible job because, you know, every once in a while I get to put on a backpack and hike into Yellowstone and that's my job. Fantastic.